Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Robron and welcome to my video bone health and wellness newsletter. And today's topic is break free from fear, master confidence and discover your potential for better health. So today let's talk about fear, specifically fear avoidance. Now fear can hold us back from living an active and fulfilling life but with the right tools and right mindset, we can overcome these obstacles. So join me as we explore effective strategies and empowering insights to help you take control of your health journey. Please note that the information presented in this video is not intended to diagnose any medical condition or offer medical advice. The purpose of this video is to provide viewers with information that can help them make informed decisions and have informed discussions with their healthcare providers, family members, and loved ones. We all know that maintaining an active lifestyle is essential for your overall health. Yet fear of pain, fear of injury, fear of loss, these can create significant roadblocks that hinder our progress. Now, one of the models that describes this apprehension is the fear avoidance cycle. Now, the fear avoidance cycle is a self-perpetuating pattern of behavior that can develop in response to fear of pain, injury, or re-injury. And it can lead to decreased physical activity, worsening health, and potentially disability. Now, the cycle typically consists of the following stages. The first stage is the pain experience stage. Now, this cycle often starts with an individual who gets an injury and they experience pain. And this can be either physical or emotional pain or someone who sustained an injury. Now, this generates fear and anxiety around the possibility of further pain and harm. So after someone experiences pain, they may begin catastrophizing about it. And this person starts to magnify the significance of the pain or injury and engages in negative thoughts and beliefs about their ability or the potential negative consequences of engaging in certain activities. Now, this progresses to pain-related fear and the, the individual becomes fearful of activities or situations that they, be, they may believe that causes more pain or re-injury or loss. This leads then to avoidance behavior. Now, due to the fear and anxiety, the individual starts avoiding activities or situations they associate with pain or injury. Now, this avoidance behavior can extend to activities that were not inherently dangerous at all, but they are perceived as risky by the individual. Now, this leads to disuse, depression, and disability. Now, as a result of avoiding certain activities, the person may become less physically active, leading to physical deconditioning, depression, and increased disability. And the cycle then leads back to pain. Now the disuse and physical deconditioning can exacerbate the original pain or even cause new pain, reinforcing the fear avoidance cycle and making it difficult for the person to break free from this pattern. Breaking the fear avoidance cycle involves adopting a different approach to pain and potentially uncomfortable situations. Now here's how the process looks when the cycle is interrupted. Now, the individual experiences pain or sustains an injury, just as we saw in the fear avoidance cycle. However, instead of catastrophizing, they adopt a more rational and constructive perspective about the situation. Now, they decide that they're going to reframe their thoughts and beliefs about the pain experience. They're going to go ahead and adopt the idea that they're going to accept and understand the potential discomfort that could be part of the process, part of normal life, or part of recovery. And that allows them to go ahead and pursue the activities that might be in their best interest. So they decide there's no fear, and then they can move to the confrontation stage. The individual chooses to confront these activities or situations that they previously associated with pain or injury. Now they may start with smaller, and less intimidating task and gradually progress to more challenging ones. They're therefore building confidence in their abilities. 
And finally, there's the recovery stage. By facing fears and engaging in activities that they once avoided, the person strengthens their physical and mental resilience. They regain control over their life and experience a reduction in pain, anxiety, and disability. This new approach allows them to break free from the fear avoidance cycle and ultimately achieve recovery. So the question is, how does someone break free from the fear avoidance cycle to move towards recovery? One effective strategy is the technique of graded exposure. Now, this involves a gradual and systematic process of exposing individuals to activities or situations they fear, helping them build confidence and alleviate their anxiety. Now, graded exposure is particularly useful for those grappling with fear avoidance related to exercise or fear of falls. Through a personalized guidance and support process, the graded exposure approach can empower you to address and overcome your fears, boost your confidence, and reclaim control of your life. Now, there are four primary and one essential components to this technique. First is graded. The exposure should be neither too easy nor too difficult. It's essential to find the balance that challenges the individual without overwhelming them. This ensures that the person feels a sense of accomplishment as they progress through the stages while still addressing their fear. Next is focus. During the exposure, the individual should remain focused and engaged in the activity without being distracted by other concerns. By fully concentrating on the task at hand, they can immerse themselves in the experience and gain a better understanding of their fear, which helps to reduce anxiety over time. The third component is prolonged exposure. The exposure should be maintained until the individual's anxiety starts to decrease. This allows them to experience their fears in a controlled environment and realize that their feared outcome is unlikely to occur. Over time, this helps them desensitize to the fear and reduce their anxiety. And then there's repetition. The exposure activity should be repeated frequently enough to help the individual become accustomed to the situations or activities. Now, consistent practice reinforces their positive experience and builds confidence, eventually leading them to a significant reduction in fearing anxiety. The essential component concerning graded exposure is its element of voluntary participation. Now, by allowing individuals to decide the extent of their exposure to their feared activity or situation, they gain a sense of control, which can contribute to significant reductions in fear and pain. Now, empowering individuals to make these choices enables them to take an active role in their own recovery, leading to improved confidence, overall well-being, and really a better state of being. Now, keep in mind, voluntary participation may not always be possible or appropriate for individuals, especially for those who are struggling with severe anxiety or others who have mental health conditions. But the majority of people, it is safe and effective. For example, someone might start wanting to lift weights, so they'll start with lighter weights, and as they feel more confidence, they'll start progressing to heavier weights, maybe just a couple pounds at a time. And then maybe they want to test the boundary of those limits as they continue to progress. But they're going to discover what is safe territory and what's not. Now, alternatively, they can also use pain as a measure, teasing the edge of discomfort without pushing too far. You don't want to ignore pain, because that's usually not a good idea, but you don't want to blast through it because you can clearly provoke your painful symptoms, which could put you right back on the peer avoidance cycle. So by following these principles of graded exposure, we can effectively approach and help individuals confront their fears, build confidence, and ultimately regain control of their lives. So if you have any questions or a challenge that you'd like to get my help with, please visit www.osteostrongfl.com. Com. And if you'd like to schedule a free consultation, you can do that right on the website. And if you happen to be in the Southwest Florida area, I would love to meet you. And if you happen to be traveling around the country and you're looking for an OsteoStrong location near you, go to www.osteostrong.me 
and you'll be able to find a studio. So until next time, I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.